Okay, so I'm going to show you is the series of techniques that you're going to start out with in terms of starting to create your pages for your book. So um, I wanted to show you some samples of how these pages are going to look because we're going to actually blend a variety of different mediums and techniques to get these interesting abstract textural pages started. So this one is um, coffee and watercolor. So you're going to be playing with coffee watercolor. And also you're going to be playing with adding salt to the watercolor to create the backgrounds. And I wanted to just kind of show you just the different looks. So this one is obviously coffee and watercolor. And then this one is just watercolor and salt. So that really adds this really interesting texture. Um, and then what we'll do, once these are all dried, we'll go back and start adding the mark making. So these are the mark makings. And I'm going to go over what you're going to need for um, this first series of techniques to start your pages off. But I kind of wanted to give you an idea of what you're actually shooting for. So what you're going to need in terms of materials is that you want to get um, some watercolor paper or mixed media paper. And I usually like this particular pad because you can actually just tear them out. Plus, they are also a really good weight. You don't want to get it too thick because then if you get to a point where you want two pages glued back to back, it'll make your pages really thick. So I stick with either 90 or 98 pound. And this is 9 by 12. You're, going, you're then going to need um, some opaque watercolor. And you can get them either in this pan set. This is um, done, this is actually the brand is Pelican. And this is um, just a series of different colors in the pan. You can also get um, them in a tube as well. So it, it's up to you whether you want to do the pan or the tube. Now, it's going to be very important to get the opaque watercolor because I found that normal watercolor, you just can't get to the intensity of color. So just to give you an idea, right, this is, this is what I mean, intensity of color, because we're going to be playing around with a lot of water on the paper, so you want to get the opaque watercolor for that purpose. So you're also going to need some acrylic paint for your mark making, and usually we do mark making with black, but you can also have white on hand in case you might want to go back and forth. And um, you, even if you use um, even the cheap acrylic paint that you can get in the bottle, this is great because it's a little bit more fluid. With these guys, you're going to have to add a little bit more water to um, some water to it to get it to flow when you start making the marks. You're also going to want to get um, coffee, instant coffee. You can pick this up at the Dollar Tree, just cheap instant coffee. Also, you want to get some salt. And um, you also want to have some saran wrap for one of the techniques. And then you do want a bottle, a spray bottle with water. So in terms of the mark making tools, you want a variety of different tools to make the marks. So, you know, you can get really creative in what you find around the house. So like a credit card, old credit card, old... Um, you know, gift card is perfect for making marks. You can get a putty spreader. Um, this thing, this wedge is really cool. It's made out of silicone, uh, silicone, the same stuff that's put on um, spatulas for cooking. That makes a different kind of mark. You can also get um, some palette knives with different tips. That will make a different type of mark. Um, anything that make a little circle, that's, you know, that you can also use um, pen caps for that. 
sea sponges is really perfect and then you want to get a variety of paint brushes this is a fan brush uh, sable you can even get um, a brush that has more of a square tip so that gives you just a, diff a variety of marks and then this is what uh, one of my favorite mark making tools because this is an old worn out brush. I don't care about it. The bristles are old. I actually went ahead and, and cut into that to make it even more um, scratchy. And that will make a different type of mark. You can do um, makeup sponges, anything to, to create a round circle. Um, you know, you can even get strings. So this just going to give you an idea of what you can use just to get your your wheels turning in terms of what can make an interesting mark so you want to make sure you have a variety of mark making tools okay so let's get started so the first thing you want to do is you want to lay down some paper towels because your paper gets pretty wet and it gets messy um, and then you want to take your first sheet of paper and spray that with your water bottle. You want to get that wet. And then you want to start adding color to your paper. And you don't have to worry so much about how it looks. You just want to get color on that um, page. And it's not really going to matter how this looks because remember for your Book of Creative Awakenings, it's going to actually be trimmed down. So that's so you don't have to worry about how it looks on the size sheet because you're going to be trimming them down. And you also want to keep in mind that you want to be open to whatever is going to happen on the page. So you don't want to try to control so much of it. Okay, so make sure that you have enough color on there. And this is one of the reasons why I said to use um, opaque watercolor because it really makes a difference how much color you can get on the page. All right, so then I'm going to spray this again just to start getting a little bit of those drops and to get some more water back on there. And then I'm going to take my salt and actually just sprinkle that. And that's going to affect how that how this looks. So now what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and take this and I'm going to put this aside because I want it to dry as it sits. I don't want to take a dryer to that. And then we're going to go ahead and take another sheet. So the whole idea about um, the whole idea about the book of Creative Awakenings is you want enough pages to select from. So you're going to actually be creating a lot of pages in this class. Just running through this technique again so that you can get a feel for how it works. Okay, spray it again with water. Get a little bit of 
paint there. And then you get your salt. And I'm going to go ahead and spray it. Sprinkle that over the wet areas. And then you're going to put that aside and let that dry. Okay, just to give you an idea, right, this has been drying just a little bit and it's already starting to create these really interesting textures and um, it's changing the, the original application of the watercolor. So that's actually pretty cool. So I'm going to let that dry. Okay, so you want to at least do a few of those and now I'm going to show you um, the technique with the saran wrap. So what you want to do first is you want to make sure that you've pre-cut some pieces of saran wrap. Because what happens is when you apply the, the paint, you want to make sure that you get that saran wrap on the paper before it dries, before the paint actually dries. Okay, so I got that ready to go. I'm going to now go through a similar um, similar process where we add paint, right? We're going to be adding color to this. You can see how I'm not even paying attention to detail here on how that because it changes and like that's why I wanted to show you um, the how the other one was changing because it didn't even you don't even see the brush strokes anymore. So that's the fun thing about this technique is you don't really need to be too meticulous with how you apply the paint. The main thing is that you really are just getting color onto the paper. Okay. All right, so now I'm going to wet this a little bit and then you're going to take your saran wrap and then you're going to now just place it and you don't have to cover the whole sheet. You can just have it in a section. And sometimes what I'll do is I will even add a little bit of salt on here just to combine both techniques. But for, for this one, we're just going to apply the um, saran wrap. And then I'm, I'm kind of purposely scrunching it up so that I get these wrinkles. And then I'm going to sit, set, the, set that aside and let it dry. You do not want to take a dryer to this because it will blow off the saran wrap. You want it to actually dry with these little wrinkles. Okay, so this tech, next one we're going to be playing with the instant coffee. So what I do is I put a little bit in a cup and then I use my spray bottle to wet it so that I'm not flooding the coffee. I do just want to get it liquefied because the darker the coffee, the more um, more of a shade that you have on your page. And then I'm going to go ahead and mix that a little bit with a brush and you want to make sure everything is dissolved. So that's actually pretty good. If the coffee is too thick, it can tend to get sticky when you dry it. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and put that aside and get another sheet. And then I'm going to go ahead and wet that. And then I'm going to add some coffee on there. And 
And then you're really going to um, add some watercolor to this because you're mixing the two colors together. Okay, then I'm going to get my saran wrap and go ahead and do the same thing and just pop that on. And I'm, going to, I'm doing a couple of different sections on this one. The other one I had uh, one piece of saran wrap. This one I'm going to actually do a couple of different places. And then I'm going to go ahead and let that sit and dry. So again, we're going to you can do as many as you can um, of these guys. So that you have a lot of pages to do your mark making. That's that's the goal. Is you want to do a few of these. Okay. So now I'm going to do the coffee again. I'm not going to really drench that <clears throat> page and then um, I'm going to show you different techniques. So I'm going to put coffee on here. And pretty much put it on the whole thing. And then I'm going to go ahead and um, add some color. I'm going to use a smaller brush for color. And then I'm just going to place it in small areas. And because most of this paper is full of coffee, it's going to bleed. But they're almost going to create these really interesting shapes. It's very cool. Very, very cool. And here again, why I wanted you to use the opaque watercolors because it really gives you those really dense applications of color. Now, this you can leave this, but I can actually experiment and see what happens if I put salt in some areas. I didn't put it on the whole thing. I just put it right here and there. Okay, so now you can then put that aside and you can then create another sheet. Okay, I wanted to show you how this guy was coming along. This paper is still damp, but this is starting to dry. So you can actually, and I, what I'll do is I will lift it up just a little and I will see that this is actually starting to make these crinkles in the paint. So this is ready to actually be lifted. So you can take 
your saran wrap off. And now you can see how you have this really interesting, cool texture and shapes in this particular technique. And then, remember this guy? This is almost dry. This is, and this one's a little damp, but I'm going to dry this just a little bit. But you can see, and this is what's really unexpected, is not all my salt watercolor pages come out like this, where everything just kind of flows in one direction. So this is very cool. Um, yeah, so this is this is still kind of wet, but you can see how that's actually starting to pull up. So that's really cool. So these are going to dry. I'm going to go ahead and dry these, and then I'm going to show you how to apply the mark making on top of that. I want okay. So I've dried these, and I just wanted to show you how these guys came out. Really cool. Now the ones with the salt, you're going to want to brush off that salt before you start doing the mark making because when you start adding the paint to that it's going to skip in those areas and you don't have to get all of it completely off sometimes that when it hits the salt it might make an interesting mark so I, what I do is I just get most of it off so it doesn't disrupt the flow of the, the mark when I start adding it And you will find that some of that salt is really stuck on there. But this is cool. I that's that came out really good. Okay, and then these guys came out really cool too. So we're ready to start making marks on here. So as you know, I'm gonna get this salt out of here. As you'll notice, I put a piece of paper on my table because. You want when you start making marks, you want to go off the page. You do not want to confine yourself to stop at the edge. You do want to go off the page. Um, that will make for some interesting mark making pages. So that's what you want to do. Okay, so I have black and white here, but we're going to start out with what black. And um, I'm going to use my scruffed up brush, but I'm not going to put a lot of paint on this because I want those marks to be a little thin. So I'm going to wipe some of it off. And then I'm just going to make marks like this. Just random. They're not really, you know, anything specific. Because I might choose for my book, I might choose to add just that portion of the page. So you're not really over focused on where your marks are going. Then, one of the things I like about this fa fan brush is that you can make some interesting shapes. Um, and also one of the things you want to do is you want to play around with moving your wrist and your hand when you're making the mark because that will sh change the way the mark looks. Also, make sure you go off the page too. Um, the thing with with mark making is we're so used to going from left to right when we write or scribble or draw so we are trying to c contradict some of that movement by doing the opposite so you can move your wrist up and down or move it side to side or move the brush so you're not just keeping it linear so I'm going to show you a really good example of that 
like this. So if I go around, but then I move it, it's going to make a different mark. It might make a fatter mark when I do that versus a thin mark. You also, and if you find that your brain gets too much in the way, try using your non-dominant hand. So if you're right-handed, try using your left hand and that will make for a different mark. That gets you out of your head sometimes. Okay, so I have like, you know, some of these marks are off the page. You don't need to fill up all the page with marks. You want to make sure that you have some open spaces of the texture coming through, the background texture. So after this is like, okay, that's pretty good. Now move on to your next page and start and continue to play with those marks. So I'm going to try the palette knife. Again, you want to change the angle, right? You could do lines, you could do fat, and then thin. And again, you do not have to know what you're doing. You are just experimenting, you're exploring, you're discovering. That's the whole idea of this particular class, is I want you to find that those little jewels that just kind of unexpectedly appear. You're looking for the unexpected. So now I'm going to switch over to this guy, which is really just, I cut, I cut off the handle of a brush. thing too is a, this is a cap to a pen. That also makes these little rings. So that's also an interesting thing. Again, I want you to go off the page, to off the edge of the page. And then you'll find that there might be a tool, right, a brush or a palette knife, whatever it is, that is your favorite. And then you can just play with that. You don't have to, you know, stick to a variety of them. You might find your favorite mark making tool. That's okay. I just want you to try a bunch of different things so that you can explore the whole idea of mark making and explore what different um, what different marks occur when you use different things. So I'm going to use a string and the way that I end up doing this is I kind of drag that through the paint with a brush to make sure I have enough and then I just kind of drag it really, really interesting. Now the whole idea of mark making is it kind of takes you back to when you're a kid. Because, you know, as we grow, become adults, we lose that sense of play. We lose that sense of, I'm just going to check out, I'm just going to see what's going to happen. If What if I do this? What if I, do? that sort of curiosity, we, we lose a little bit of that natural instinct to see what's going to happen if I drag a piece of string along this with paint. And that's kind of what I want you to reconnect with is, you know, that childlike intuition. Okay, so so you kind of get the idea that this is what you're doing. You're adding marks. I'm going to show you now that if I were to go to white, right? Because white is a different color. 
And you want to make sure that you have enough um, dark areas. So I'm going to play around with white. And it does give you a whole different feel. Which I kind of don't mind. Then I like this palette knife because it you can drag it. And it makes for a different sort of organic mark which is cool. So I just wanted to show you what it looks like when you add white. So you can add white also. And another, another thing too is that you just want to, the reason why I wanted to do a lot of these pages is that once you get into the mark making process, you're going to find that you're going to need another page so that you want to kind of run through this and especially if you get into the flow of things you want to be able to have enough pages to play around with. Okay, so now that's going to give you enough pages to play with when it comes to your book of Creative Awakenings. So. So this is one that I've already done and we've done a couple of different techniques in the class. But you can see I trimmed this down so really there's a whole bunch of different uh, ways that you can actually crop the pages and, and how you're going to end up with marks that are in different places in the pages. So that's the first series of techniques and then in the rest of the class I do go through a bunch of other techniques that play with cheesecloth, uh, fabric paper, um, it's, you know, paper bag. So that's what's really fun about this class is that you have so many different techniques to play around with and um, actually just allow your, you know, your inner artist kind of explore.